Hey guys, uh, it's Ash from Team Outlaws, 4x4, thought I'd just um, show everyone what the inside of a bump stop looks like, because um, I'm going to modify mine. So, just for those that don't know what a hydraulic bump stop looks like, this is a Fox 2 by 4 inch hydraulic bump stop. Now what that means is it's 2 inch diameter and it has a 4 inch stroke. Now these have hydraulic they're nitrogen charged uh, they're also full of oil and they're basically your bump stops, right? The final line of defense. Now, um, you can buy them in different stroke lengths. Um, however, these are some old ones that I had, which I'm reusing. Um, and these are four inch stroke, okay? This is the stroke, this is the stroke here. Now, these get mounted in what's called a bump stop can or canister, which is this thing here and it's just got two bolts and it pinches up nice and tight and there's a lip just here so when the bump stop sits up and this is pinched up it um, it sits on that lip so the bump stop can't get up anymore now on the rear four inch stroke no problem at all not an issue there however on the front four inch stroke is going to cause me a little bit of issue because of the angle that the bump stop sits on right you can see we're hanging on the limit strap down there at the moment now you can imagine as this arm comes up the top this is the bump pad and if we were just to drop this down at the moment and you'll see roughly what I'm talking about basically as the arm comes up this angle is going to change and at four inches of stroke, there's a point at which it's going to start to hit on this kind of angle, and it's it's not very good. It's going to be putting a lot of side loading on the bump stop, and potentially, you know, you're going to be stressing the the shaft. Now, don't get me wrong; it's a pretty big shaft, so it's not probably not going to bend, but it will be stressing this point up here and trying to tear the bump stop off the frame. So, you'll probably notice on a lot of pro buggies and, and trucks um, they don't really run along if they run a bump stop at all they don't really run a long um, stroke bump stop on the front and that's because by the time this arm gets up here it, how can I explain this so once this arm gets up into the bump zone, the angle of the arm actually ends up being more in line with this angle. So it's a end up and ends up being like a direct push, which is what you want, right? And there won't be the all the load will be getting um, will be getting distributed upwards rather than trying to tear the bump canister off or roll it around. Now to get it get the arm high enough so the two planes meet up we need to reduce the stroke of the arm um, the shock or the bump the bump stop all right it's base it's like a shock so to do that you have two options option 1 which is very easy and you could do it at home if you really wanted to but ideally you would you would cut it on a lathe. Now option one, um, let me put this camera down somehow. All 
Just show you how this actually goes together. So, for all those that don't know, the tip of your bump stop is actually made out of a nylon hard hard plastic. Okay, and it's like a puck. And there's just a single bolt that goes through it to retain the puck. So if your your um, bump pad is all smashed up, you can just um, change them. You can undo the um, I don't know. I think it's a quarter inch bolt, right? And that bolt just goes through there and retains the bump pad. Okay. You can just undo that bolt, pop that out and change out your pad. Now, um, you know, like Race Gear WA, like Stephen Phillips at Race Gear WA, he's got them in stock. Um, or whoever else you use, you know. Um, so, if you need to change that out, you can. Now, if we get back to the how to shorten the sh the um, the stroke. Now, it's all a bit, all a bit dirty. So basically, where's our other bump stop? Here we go. So there's our bump stop, complete. This is our bump stop housing, the one that I've pulled apart. And you've got your Schroeder valve in the top, right? In the bottom, we've got our valving, right? On the end of the shaft. We've got our... Oh, I'm making things difficult. Take the Schroeder valve back off. Okay. So we've got our... This is our, our shaft, it's all one piece assembly. We've got our bump pad on the end, okay? Then we've got our, our shaft. This is our cap, right? Which is actually this part just in here, okay? Depending on what, um, how old your bump stops are, on, these are the older ones, so you actually just get a, a screwdriver and work your way around. There's three spots, and you ply it up, and you'll pop that cap. It's a press fit down into here, right? So there's the cap. Once you've removed that cap, right? Looking in, I don't know if you can see, but looking in here, there's a groove, right? And basically, all of this will be down inside here, and there's a groove stopping it from. Um, and in that groove, you have a um, one of these separator rings. It's kind of like a circlip. That sits in that groove, and that's stopping the whole lot from being pulled out. So once you've got this cap off, you push it down enough so you can get in there with a seal pick or a small flat blade, and you pull this um, separator ring out, and then you can pull the whole assembly out, right? And this is what you end up with. Now, so this is what you end up with. This part here is the piston. The, mm, yeah, it's, it's the piston, right? It's basically the seal. Is it? This is your valving for the bump stop. And this little bad boy, this is the spacer. Now, what we can do, this spacer, so you, these are four inch, uh, um, four inch stroke shafts. That, so when the pistons seal arrangement is at the bottom of the, the body, right? So here's the body. 
but basically it'd be sitting like this, okay? You can see that um, we've got our four inches of shaft. Now if we change the size of this spacer, we can reduce the amount of shaft that comes out. So if we were to undo this nut, pull all the valving off, slide this spacer off, right? Cut another spacer, say we cut one double this length, right? This, this one here is um, a, rough, a rough measurement. So this is, uh, let's call it an uh, inch and a half. It's just less than that. Right. So if we made one three inches, we would be taking an inch and a half out of the stroke that we've got. So if we've got four, four inches of stroke, and we made a space that was three inches long, we would end up with a two and a half inch stroke bump stop. So basically what we'd be doing if we were to double this spacer, okay, that would mean that the maximum amount it would allow this shaft to come out of the bump stop would be this distance here. So by increasing the length of this spacer, and this spacer isn't anything special either, by the way, it's literally, a, it's not even on there, like it's not even a tolerance type fit or anything or, or a nice machined fit it's loose okay and it's basically uh, a piece of inch and a half by 120 wall chromoly okay so um, so inch and a half thirty eight mil with a three mil wall Okay, for those metric people. Um, and yeah, that is one way of reducing the shaft in your bump stop. Now the other way, which is what I'm going to do, because I've noticed that on the ends of my shaft, on a couple of them, I think these might have been, on the, been used on the rear of the car, See just here, I've got some pitting on the chrome, right? Now up here, all the chrome is perfect. Up here, chrome's perfect. Down here, we've got some pitting. Now, I want to reduce my bump stops down to about an inch and three quarter, two inch straight, okay? Now, what I'm going to do, instead of changing the spacer out, I'm actually going to cut the shaft which basically means I'm also cutting away all this um, pitted section of the shaft, which is going to chew out my seals. And I'll be left with all the nice shaft, nice chrome. And to do the cutting of the shaft, I'll show you how easy it is. This is option number two. So you've got to take your bump pad out. Right. Bump pad comes out. Now I've already cracked mine, but to get this off, once the bump pad's out, you'll see in here you've got a, I think it's a 3.8. I've already heated up the shaft. And this is threaded into the end of the shaft just like that and what do you know the shaft is actually hollow okay and all we're going to do to reduce our um, shaft length now is disassemble this take it to a machine shop we're going to get them to cut back the correct amount and then recut this thread on the inside for our bump cap to screw screw back into. And we'll just be reducing the actual actual shaft that's in there.
We also, by doing this, it will mean we'll, we'll, we will have to um, run more, more oil, more, more fluid. That's cool. Not that we hit bump stops that often, but uh, just give it more cooling capacity, I suppose. But anyway, there you go. Two ways to reduce the um, stroke of your bump stops. Um, like I said, these are two inch uh, Fox bump, sh bump stops, two inch by four, four inch stroke. Um, not really much difference between the two and a half, the, you know, I think you'll probably find if you pulled a, um, a two by three or a two by two, all Fox have probably done is put a different size spacer in here. All right, so I don't think they're, they're physically um, smaller. So you might find that if you've got a two inch um, stroke bump stop and you want to go the other way, it might pay to open it up and have a look how big this spacer is because in your case you could just cut the spacer down and then you'll have four inches of stroke and you haven't had to go and buy new bump stops. All right. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't, subscribe to our Outlaws 4x4 YouTube page and also like us and subscribe on the Team Outlaws 4x4 Facebook page and um, and you can follow us building the new trophy truck and once that's done you can follow us racing and probably crashing it and whatever else we're going to do let's hope we don't crash it um, and yeah um, thanks for watching and we'll catch us out there thanks Oh, my God.